Section 13.12 uh, is called estimating currents in an induction motor. And what we're going to look at is this uh, fifth equation that I was telling you about. Very, very useful equation um, that allows us to do uh, a very close approximation of the uh, current at uh, a full load in, a, in an induction motor. So let's get something to look at besides me, and we'll start to talk about that. Okay, so the uh, full load current of a three-phase induction motor can be calculated by means of this equation of 13.5. And again, um, guys and girls, you're being able to understand these five equations gives you a particular insight into the operation of a three-phase induction motor. And that, you know, um, I'm not saying you necessarily need to, you know, memorize these, but, you know, I think in normal times in some ways too, you know, our, our use of these equations uh, in class, in lab and all that, you'd sort of, you know, uh, memorized by uh, default, so to speak. But anyway, knowing these, understanding what these mean, uh, gives you a, a great insight how the three-phase induction motor works, okay? And again, you know, as in the explanation, this is an estimation of the full load current. And this is the output horsepower here. And here is that example, you know, of even though we're uh, committed to SI units, the power is given in horsepower and the equation is written in terms of horsepower. This is the line voltage that is supplied to the motor, okay? And uh, the 600 is a imperial constant. And I'm trying to think right now where that comes from. And without just sitting here killing time, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, it has some bearing on this use of horsepower. I can't remember what, but you know, as engineers, technicians, and technologists, just give us the equation and we'll work with it, right? Okay, so that's what we have. These are our five equations, okay? Now, to work this problem, we're gonna have to kind of go back to that table that we looked at earlier and, and sort of pull some data from that and, and then uh, proceed through. Now, from that table, I am going to ahead and write this down. I saw that the starting uh, current at a locked rotor was between five and six per unit, and that the no load current, and that the no load current was between 0.5 and 0.3. Okay. So we know that going in. So when I come to a problem like 13.4 on page 277, it says calculate the approximate full load current, locked rotor current, and no load current of a three-phase induction motor that has a rating of 500 horsepower and 2300 volts. Okay, when it's rated at 2300 volts, that means you, you can, you can, um, up to that amount, you know, apply to that motor. Okay, now, how many 500 horsepower motors have you run into? How many 2300 volt motors have you run into? Probably not many. That's a very large motor. This is in a, in a big industrial application that we're looking at. Okay, so let's do uh, part A first. And I'll just go through, we'll just, you know, pull our uh, equation out here. The full load current is, is the equation that we have here. And, you know, this is, this is accurate, uh, you know, to do um, very great approximation. And so 600 is a constant, 500 horsepower given, and then divided by 2300, which is the rated voltage, and when I plug and chug here, I get 130 amps is the full load current, okay? Now, if that's the case, 
if the full load current, and that's where I, what I base everything off of, then if I want to know the no load current for this, I can use my approximation of 0.3. So the current, and again, that came from a table that we looked at in the earlier section. So current at no load is 0.3 times 130 amps or 39 amps. 39 amps is needed just to make this motor turn, okay? It's not the operating current, it's the no load current. The starting current, and let's see, locked rotor, I locked rotor. The starting current is the five to six. So if I'm trying to uh, specify circuit protection or whatever, I'm gonna go with the higher one. And I'm gonna say it's gonna be six times the full load current which uh, for this would be 780 amps. A lot of current, right? And so, you know, we need to be able to, to know that, to have an estimation of that. And, uh, you know, everything needs to be sized in according to that. So that's a very useful um, uh, application for us. All right, now, part B of this, if I can find space here, this is what is the apparent power now, um, regardless if you're up to speed on, uh, you know, three types of power, apparent, reactive, and true power, I'm going to go ahead and work this. But, you know, the, you know, the uh, true power, the reactive power, if it's inductive, and the apparent power, which is the uh, vector sum of those, and, and so in this particular case, he says, estimate the apparent power drawn under locked rotor conditions. Okay, well, for this problem, it's the apparent power is gonna be the square root of three times the voltage times the current. And under locked rotor conditions, the voltage doesn't change. And the current is 780 under locked rotor. So it would be 3,100 kilovolt amps, approximately. Okay. And then the uh, last thing it says is, what is, state the nominal rating of this motor expressed in kilowatts. Easy peasy, right? This is a conversion of uh, 500 horsepower to watts. And I'm just going to say one horsepower is equal to 746 watts. I'll um, take out my calculator and then I would find out that uh, these cancel, of course. And let's see what we got here. We got uh, clear 500 times 746, and I get 37, 373,000 watts or one, two, three, 373 kilowatts. Okay, so uh, that's that problem. And again, you know, once we use our equation uh, three, five to get the full load current, then based on those characteristic curves, knowing that locked rotors five to six times that amount, no load is 0.3 to 0.5, you know, we can do these, uh, very accurate approximations of those other values.